I probably am most uh, known, if I'm known for anything these days, to being uh, the creator of a sort of a style of pottery that is very um, much about the marriage of decoration onto the, onto the form. I'm someone who really enjoys the hand processes of painting and this includes hand painting onto pottery, um, which is not that fashionable these days. It's a little bit seen as being possibly, um, you know, old generation or something again associated with your grandparents, possibly because it was done badly industrially and that gave everyone a bit of a, a sour taste of what decoration on pottery could be about. So there's that aspect of it. But in my work, I love the hand skills of painting and hand skills of painting on clay are very particular. And I, if I'm going to be doing that painting, I need to paint something. And luckily I'm interested in a lot of historical sources. So I draw my imagery from a very, very rich legacy of, of traditional uh, approaches, which can be, you know, little bands of decoration, borders of decoration, and particularly obviously the blue willow imagery. Um, I expand that with natural history sources, uh, sources from scientific illustration, from fashion and fabric, textiles, from, uh, well in the case of this little piece that I'm working on right here at the moment, I'm drawing this from uh, 18th century uh, lacquered wood uh, decoration, pen and ink done on wood and then French polished. That I want to people to be able to live with these pieces, to use them, to enjoy them. That's why I make things as humble as uh, small cups and uh, teapot. Things that are utility, that, uh, that actually people can use, handle, touch, uh, use to taste food, ingest and also use as rituals in their lives. I also make things which you would not say are useful. They're more one-off kind of pieces, they're often large in scale, and they, in a way, are extending the dialogue about utility and function. And there's a big uh, cup and saucer, which people will see in the show, and when they look more closely at that, they'll see that it's sort of an essay about Adelaide. The whole surface of it is filled with a sort of a fantasy wander through Adelaide. The parklands become a, almost a blue willow world, the uh, buildings like uh, at the back of the museum and the, the chambers off the side of the town hall are all featured on there. The jam factory itself uh, is featured in there, and as are the rainwater tanks. People would recognise uh, references to Alice in Wonderland in that work because uh, that's another text that for me as a child was a uh, wonderful a voyage of exploration. In this case with a heroine, um, you know, it's very easy to dismiss all this kind of macho bravado of being an explorer as a male domination, but uh, Alice in Wonderland is a fantastic example of the exploration of a psychotropic zone, a mental world of um, absurdity perhaps, but also of just the power of uh, a heroine who can go into that world and encounter it. So Alice herself and the characters out of the Lewis Carroll book feature strongly in a lot of my work, whether it's the dodo, which is a wonderfully complex metaphor for something that was literally devoured by humankind, driven to extinction. If ever there's a cautionary tale, the dodo is a good example of it. Well, as I hope people can see once they look, uh, look at a piece like Blue Roo, which is in this exhibition, is, is that here you've got a very classic picture of a kangaroo. It is based on the painting by George Stubbs, which was painted shortly after the Voyage of Exploration Cook's voyage got back to England. And of course, uh, Joseph Banks, who was on that voyage, he commissioned Stubbs who was the preeminent animal illustrator, to paint a picture of the kangaroo, this new animal, which was uh, an incredible sort of revelation. Dubs had to work from a few sort of desiccated, dried out specimens, which had traveled back from Australia in the hold of the Endeavour. When Cook was sailing up the east coast of Australia, he discovered or ran into literally the Great Barrier Reef. They had to run it up onto the beach and they lost a lot of specimens because the hold was flooded. And while they were holed up at the Endeavour River, they had to try and replace some of the lost things. So the kangaroo actually comes from that point of contact. 
it'd be great to see that in Australia because it is one of the first depictions of the kangaroo. And it really became the image of the kangaroo. It was like uh, what an FJ Holden was. It was what a Holden looked like for many, many years. And Stubbs's kangaroo is what a kangaroo looked like for many, many years. Um, even when there were more specimens, and indeed live ones, actually uh, in England, people still reproduced Stubbs as kangaroo. People could come and admire these things in print rooms and look at them, and uh, Stubbs as kangaroo with this wonderful sort of over-the-shoulder, on-regarded pose where it's sitting up in the landscape. And anyone who looks at the original print of that would see closely that there's Xantheria, and there's a real attempt to set it in an uh, authentic landscape, even though it's fanciful. Uh, it's a reconstruction from a few literal bare bones conjured up into life by Stubbs and then reproduced, reflected. People looking at my paint will see quite clearly that it is my attempt to replicate again the impact of the copper plate because the copper plate was a definite line. It was an etched, drawn line. It was as if the world was being measured. Uh, not for the first time, but certainly measured by these people very carefully. In the background, if you look through that sort of um, filter of measurement that was being applied to the natural world, in this case the kangaroo, you will see a fragment of blue willow pattern. Blue willow, of course, was uh, originally based on ideas and images about the Orient, about the exotic East, which is actually where Australia is. And I've used Blue Willow a lot throughout my uh, work because it represents projection of what might have been or what might be about the land of the other, the faraway place that exists on the horizon. And the Willow Plate itself is often depicted as a, as a harbour in the plate uh, Blue Roo, I hope you can sort of see uh, a, a sort of an overlay, a bringing together conjunction of the sort of possibilities of the imagination echoed in the background of the Blue Willow, overlay with the, with the fact of nature, with the, with the apprehension, with the encounter of the natural world.